Hi there, I'm back with another episode of Watercolor Basics. Today I'm going to be talking about brushes, so stay tuned, it's going to be interesting. So when it comes to brushes, there's so many out there that's very hard for me to decide on what to include and what to leave out. Um, but for the most part, I've tried to uh, separate them to round, flat and speciality. And the different hair would be uh, sable, synthetics and mixed. When you're just beginning to start a collection of brushes, I would really encourage you to get um, brushes which range in numbers so that you have a good variety when when you start to paint so uh, to begin i would definitely suggest that you get yourself a zero number brush or a number one brush or a line at least one liner brush and then you could go for a round brush which would be um four six eight um if i were truly to advise you i would say go larger so that you don't fiddle with your brush strokes so if you're brave enough even get yourself a number 10 otherwise stay between six and eight and um, i think that will hold you in good stead because that way you have a variety to do fine details as well as large washes So first I'll be talking about round brushes and here I'm showing you two different types that I have and that is uh, the Cotman range and the uh, silver black velvet range. Both are equally good and uh, both are kind of um, on the lower end of the budget. So they are more affordable and uh, uh, as long as they are round and they come to a sharp point, you're pretty good with uh, your choice of brushes there's no wrong in that uh, the only thing you need to see is that um, they come to a sharp point because that that is very that's the key to a good round brush so that's what you should see me uh, showing you here the blue one is a cotman and the black one is a silver black velvet So the next are my favorite, that is the mop brushes. They are ideal for my kind of painting, which is loose and expressive. And uh, they, they hold a lot of water. They have a super huge belly and that holds a lot of water and pigment. And they also spring to a very nice point. So they are double duty. You can do large washes with them as well as you can do fine details. And um, if you can, definitely get one of these because the, they they uh, it's an experience in itself uh, and until you use them you won't know it so do get yourself one of these brushes they are made of squirrel hair and um, yeah it, it, you must you must try these The mop brushes that I have, they came as a set of two. It's by Da Vinci and then the numbers are one and four. And as I said, they are made of um, squirrel hair. And um, I'm not sure where I got them, but then you could go for any brush which has the same, um, it's made of, the, of similar hair because it has the capacity to hold water as I mentioned earlier. So don't go by the brand, just go by the, the style and the hair which is far more important. So here I'm showing you some synthetic brushes. These came when I purchased um, some um, watercolor paints and uh, um, these are what I'm trying to show you with these brushes is that uh, you should go for larger sizes and this is a 6 and a 10 that I'm showing you. Uh, when I started, I started with uh, uh, tiny brushes and I really fiddled with my brush strokes and I feel um, that really uh, hinders your progress. So I really encourage you to look into larger sizes and that's what I'm trying to show you here and since these are synthetic brushes, they are more budget friendly. So definitely give these a look before you invest in sable hair brushes. Now to mention briefly about speciality brushes, um, I have not really looked into them myself. I have very few of uh, any of those speciality brushes at all and uh, in some recent editions have been the angular brushes and um, that's what you see me show you here and these are, um, I, ha I just have a couple of them, they are synthetic brushes and then later I am also showing you one which is white and that's by Rosemary and Company and that's again an angular brush which is uh, 
disposable hairbrush and um, I have two sizes um, the synthetic brushes I have two sizes that is half and three eighth of an inch and both of them are equally good and you see me using them uh, for my roses especially and uh, if you want to see them in action you, I, you can see my roses video and I can leave you a link also in the description uh, yeah so that's the only thing that I have really uh, looked into because I have never felt the need to go and uh, go use any of these uh, specialty brushes but if you are I'm sure there are plenty out there uh, which you can definitely um, explore um, so yeah so that's all I have to say about the uh, specialty brushes So here I'm going to be talking about the sable brushes and uh, these are made of sable hair and um, these are slightly higher up on your budget level so unless and until you are sure of being uh, um, of wanting to keep moving with your watercolor journey and uh, you know for sure that you love watercolors uh, this would be something that I would call an investment piece and uh, these are really expensive brushes and at least I found them to be expensive brushes and um, I, I started my collection with just one uh, just to give them a try I purchased just one they, you can find them in uh, individually as well as in sets so I just picked up one I am not not so sure um, I think it was a four or a six and then when I realized that uh, this is what I wanted to do and I really enjoyed the feel of these brushes I went ahead and I invested in the complete set and um, the, this is a box that you see that it comes in this box and it's called the Vincent and Newton series 7 Kolinsky sable brushes and um, the, you you can find them at uh, most art supply stores not your regular hobby stores um, you would have to go for um, the the art supply stores and um, yeah this is definitely uh, one of my most prized possessions and uh, if i have to be stuck somewhere i would rather be stuck with my uh, kolinsky sable brush i love them so much and uh, if you've seen uh, my earlier videos you would see me use this all the time and the only um I wouldn't say a con with the brush in itself it's just that for the price that you pay and the numbers on it and the um, the um, the name of the brush etc they they just rub off and I think for a brush this expensive uh, I would expect more but uh, so because of that I don't know which brush is which number not that I need to know but then if I need to explain I'll not be able to show it to you if you can see some of my most used brushes um, the name and the number has um is erased completely so yeah so if you are looking to invest in a set of brushes then definitely go for the Winston and newton series 7 kolinsky sable brushes and finally for all of us who love to travel and take our um, supplies with us i have the travel brushes and uh, these uh, come apart so that they can you know you can travel with them without uh, damaging the point of the brush and then the one that I have is by Isabe Isabe I'm not so sure how to say that and um, and uh, there's one by uh, Rosemary and Company so these are my favorite uh, travel brushes and as you can see I still have the squirrel mop because that's one brush I I don't like to go anywhere with out and I use them a lot when I go out to travel so these are called portable brushes or travel brushes and um, if you love to travel and uh, paint or plein air then I think this is a good one to keep in your purse all the time So that's all I had about um, brushes today. I'll be back soon with another video which will be talking about paper. Until then stay safe and see you soon. Bye.